Hey guys, I'm Brennan Kish. I'm a student at Arizona State University and I'm going for my electrical engineering degree, my BSE. And uh, what I'd like to talk to you guys about is uh, stepper motors. I'm going to be doing a little series about stepper motors, mainly how they work, uh, how to wire them up, and how to use a microprocessor such as a PIC from Microtrip to go ahead and control them. Uh, so I wanted to do a little bit of overview of a stepper motor, what a stepper motor is, why you would use it, and um, some of the differences between a stepper motor and a regular motor. So a stepper motor is a rotational motor that you can control very specifically how much it rotates by. Um, I'm not going to go into detail how you do this. I, I will later in some of the, the, the other tutorials, but for this introduction I just wanted you to know that that's what a stepper motor does. It is slower than a standard motor, um, but what you're giving up in speed, you're gaining in accuracy. Um, you can see I have a circuit already built, uh, just a very basic setup with some parts I had laying around the house. I uh, have it running a program that I programmed, a very basic program, just to demonstrate its accuracy. So let me go ahead and show you now. I actually put a zip tie on the end of it here just so you could actually see it moving. So I don't know if you can hear the buzzing sound in the video here, but uh, that is a normal sound for a stepper motor. So as you can see, I've programmed the stepper motor to do quarter turns. It'll do one full rotation and it'll stop at each quarter to show its accuracy. It'll then also proceed to rotate in the opposite direction doing the same thing. So this is an example of how accurate or how you can control a stepper motor to do different projects. Uh, one example of a project that I actually used this motor in was uh, one of my electrical engineering classes, which was for uh, an elevator that we had to build. So using the stepper motor, I was able to control exactly how much the elevator would go up, how much it would go down, and using that, I was able to create a carriage that would stop at specific floors. And I could, at any point, I would know where my elevator was uh, all through the coding because whatever signal I sent out from the coding, the motor, uh, the, the code itself could keep track of where the motor was. So if you had something like a regular DC motor, uh, the motor, the amount of distance or the amount of rotations it's going to do is a little bit harder to control, uh, you know, one way of doing it would be through time. You would have to do the calculations for the current, for its speed, the voltage you're using. And even when you do all those calculations and test it, chances are real life events are going to cause it to be slightly off, such, such as it's going to keep rotating after you turn power off slightly, or things like that. Uh, the stepper motor, you do not have that effect. Also with a stepper motor, when the stepper motor stops, it will actually hold its position as long as power is continually supplied. So when the motor is at a standstill, uh, you could actually sit there and try and rotate the motor, and it's actually, uh, it is, it sees it's, let's wait for it to stand still. See, I actually cannot rotate it with my fingers because the current is preventing it from rotating. So that is one of the major advantages to a stepper motor is uh, being able to turn it uh, to an exact amount. Also being able to hold that position once you get there as long as power is supplied. Um, this stepper motor as you can see on the screen I have the model number up there. It is a 12 volt power supply required or it runs at 12 volts. Uh, each coil, and I'm going to get into the coils here, draws about 400 milliamps and generally you will run two coils at a time so your total output or your total draw is 800 milliamps so 0.8 amps um, so that being said now that you kind of have an idea of what the advantage to a stepper motor is how it can be used in a project I want to go over a little bit just got some kind of the basics of how a stepper motor works um, in fact that brings up another point of one of the the, the other key differences between a standard motor and a stepper motor is you're going to notice there's several wires for a stepper motor versus a uh, DC motor has about two and depending on the direction of the current you can change which way it rotates. 
A stepper motor works uh, slightly different. Uh, with a stepper motor, you actually send a signal through the four wires. Uh, you send a current through the four wires in a specific order that causes the motor to rotate going from one wire to the next. And I'll get a little bit, uh, I'll explain a little bit more what I mean here in, uh, when I draw this diagram out. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this motor off, kind of see how it works, you have an idea of what it does. Let me get a fresh sheet of paper here. Okay. So for a stepper motor, we actually have two coils. There are two traditional setups. There's a bipolar and a unipolar setup. The first one I'm going to do is a bipolar setup. And don't worry, I will re rotate this paper. Fortunately, my little setup here is not as good as I would like it. Uh, this is a bipolar setup, and this usually will have four wires for the stepper motor. Wire 1, wire 2, wire 3, and wire 4. Let me go ahead and turn this around so you can see it here. In fact, I'm going to hold it up a little bit just in case. So you have four wires that come off the motor, and you have two what's called coils. And these coils are basically just wiring wrapped around a... Uh, uh, Usually it's uh, iron. Uh, sometimes it can be wrapped around iron. Sometimes there can be nothing there. This is all internal of the stepper motor. So let me go ahead and draw uh, a little box here, just showing you that this, all of this, these, all these parts are actually inside the stepper motor. And what happens is, is if we put a, a current that goes across wire two or from wire 1 down to wire 2, or even from wire 2 up to wire 1, we cause a magnetic field across this coil here. And depending on which direction we send the current, whether we send it from 2 to 1 or from 1 to 2, causes this field, the polarity of this field generated, to change. So when we send it from 1 to 2, I forget the exact rule, I think it has to do with your right hand um, as far as um, sorry, I digress. I'm getting a little off topic. But basically, you create this cylinder of a magnetic field around these coils here. And depending on the polarity of that cylinder, the magnet, the north side, might be attracted to this coil, or the south side might be attracted to this coil. So I wanted to point out also that this is a very basic example of a stepper motor. Most modern stepper motors have several coils all wrapped around a sent iron core. And in fact, I'll go ahead and show you the inner workings of my stepper motor here in just a minute. Now you have this other coil that does the exact same thing. It also produces a magnetic field. And depending on which way you put that magnetic field in there, whether you put the current from 3 to 4, so input current from 3 and put 4 to ground, or put current from 4 and put 3 to ground, depends on where the magnetic field is generated. So, one key thing about this is if we were, say, put the north side, a north polarity on 3 and 4, and a south polarity on 2 and 1, you would see this magnet rotate in a direction, so you would have north over here, south on this side. When that happens, the magnet will sit in that position. That field, as long as there is current flowing through this coil, it will constantly be attracting the north side and the south side of this magnet. So the magnet will not want to rotate. This is what causes the stepper motor to stay in one position as long as there's voltage going to these coils. This is a huge advantage. So this is a bipolar setup. So what is a unipolar setup? Well, a unipolar setup is very similar to a bipolar. I'm going to go ahead and cross bipolar out and put unipolar. And I apologize if my writing is a little backwards. And the way a unipolar sets up, the setup is, is we add an additional two wires. Generally, these two wires go to ground. And there's no longer four. This is six. And once again, I apologize if my number is backwards. We now have a unipolar setup where we have our two, our, our extra two wires. 
And what this setup does is it allows for a little bit more uh, accuracy in the turns. And what I mean by this is every time we do something called stepping the motor, which is we change the polarities on the coils in order to move the magnet a certain direction, we have uh, now ultimately four separate coils that we can use to step it a little bit smaller steps at a time. This will become apparent later when I show you uh, more about programming it and going into more detail about the circuitry. But basically a unipolar has six wires versus four. Now one unique thing about the unipolar that you can do, not only does it have more accuracy, which also, by the way, when you use um, all six wires when the unipolar, you actually lose a little bit of torque. So a bipolar uh, motor generally has a better holding torque and better uh, rotational torque, mainly because you're using the full coil, whereas a unipolar, you're using only half the coil, so the torque is reduced, uh, but you're gaining accuracy. So there is a trade-off. However, a unipolar can actually be used as a bipolar. So notice the only difference between a unipolar and a bipolar is that a unipolar actually has six wires, but it still has that full coil there. So if we actually ignore the center wire and just taper that off or put it aside and don't use it to ground, we can now send the current from coil one all the way down to coil two. So a unipolar uh, motor can actually act as a bipolar motor, and the reason why we would want to do this is for that holding torque or that uh, rotational torque. So that's the major differences between a unipolar and bipolar system. Uh, it does not, when we say unipolar or bipolar, both of them can rotate in both directions. Uh, I see some confusion about that. So they can both rotate clockwise and counterclockwise. It actually has to do with the accuracy and uh, usually bipolar motor or stepper motors will be rated for a certain degree per turn. Uh, I believe unipolars are usually about 7 degrees, a little bit more than 7 degrees, whereas a bipolar is usually about 14 degrees uh, in that range. So we'll get into more about how that works later. I just wanted to give you a basic idea of what a bipolar motor does, what its advantages are. So to keep in mind, I'm going to be putting some more tutorials and more in-depth uh, explanations of the unipolar or uh, the motors in general, but stepper motors. So I'm going to go ahead and take the motor apart real quick, and I want to show you physically the inner workings of a stepper motor. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this stepper motor apart. I'm going to do that by unscrewing these screws here. Um, I want to do this so that you don't have to take your own apart, so that uh, you know you kind of understand that that this drawing I'm doing for you is a very very basic version of how an actual stepper motor works. It's the same concept, however there are slightly more coils, uh, but they do work in the same way. So, let me go ahead and pull this stepper motor apart. Also, I don't know if I said it before, but I do have the model number of the stepper motor and the screen there, and uh, I have that screen up because I'm going to use it in later tutorials. Do not worry about the colors or anything. So here is the casing that I'm pulling off taking that off. All right. I'm going to pull out the core, if you'll let me here. Actually, I might pull out the sides here. Get the bottom part off ever so gently. Get a little rubber gasket, you can see, for the wiring. These are uh, washers that are just allow it to rotate, so I'm going to take those off. Now, I'm actually going to slide this core out of here if I can get it out it's actually really really stuck in there because the magnets are so strong so this is the core of the stepper motor and I'm sure I'm probably touching it in places that I shouldn't be uh, a little bit of grease around there to allow it to slide but these here are actually the north and south poles of the inner workings of the coil. My screw keeps wanting to jump up there. You have your washers here that are allowing it to turn. Looks like regular roller blade washers that you would see on a roller blade. 
But the really interesting part is you can see here the wiring actually goes to several coils that are wrapped up. Uh, and these are the coils that I'm talking about when I talk about the coils and the drawing. So you can see it has several coils. It's not just two. However, there are uh, there's the two are connected to each wire. So this one might be connected to coil one, coil two, coil one, coil two, coil one, coil two. So the co the wires actually activate these coils that cause a magnetic field which the center core is actually very very magnetic it's very strong the green part and as you can see the little I don't know if you can see in the video the little silver tab little like silver tabs ish you can see the inside of this I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it but I'm gonna try and rotate it there are little silver linings to show the magnetism that cause it to line up so these will be a north or a south depending on which way you send the polarity. So I just wanted to be able to show you guys that. I'm going to reassemble it. I'm going to go ahead and attach the motor. It's going to suck the core right in. There you go. Super strong. Keep in mind, this is not connected. All right, that's just the internal workings are that strong, the magnet magnetism. Let me go ahead and get my rubber gasket in there. Almost forgot my washers. I don't know the technical name for these washers, so bear with me. Alright, these guys are a little bit of a pain to get back in there, so I'm going to kind of shove them in. Okay, let me get the other one. Also put that one in there. Okay, let me go ahead and put the bottom part back on. Alright, make sure it's sitting in there right. Nice and firm. It's got the axle through the bottom part. I'm gonna reattach the top here. All right. Got that going. Looks like it's all lined up. I'm gonna go ahead and reapply my screws. Whoops. So now you've seen the inner workings of a stepper motor. And you can see that what I'm trying to convey with my diagram there is very accurate to how it works internally. However, like I said, it is very simplified. Uh, this modern stepper motor works slightly different, but the concept is very much the same. It has, uh, instead of one north and one south on the uh, magnet, as you saw uh, in my diagram, it has a rounded core that is polarized and it has several magnetic strips I would call them that give off a north or a south and depending on which version the, or which coil is energized depends on that core which way it's going to rotate. Okay, go ahead and screw this back on you go ahead and pause the video and rewire it make sure it's still working <laughs> and uh, show you that this is the motor and that's how it works okay so I all I did was connect the motor again back to my circuit and I have my zip tie on there so now we can see it rotating and you can see it is working just like it's supposed to after I disassembled it and reassembled it so feel free if you get your own stepper motor to experiment pull it apart kind of take a look at it and get a feel for really what you're doing with the electronics. I'm going to go ahead and end this video on that note. My name is Brandon Kish. I'm a student at ASU. And if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be putting up more videos about how to actually program this through C and using uh, MP Lab, how to control it with a microprocessor, and what's required for the circuitry. Thank you.